Hello and welcome to this video on what you should do before running an SEM. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis, latent class analysis and general psychometrics. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to address the question of what preliminary steps should you take before running a structural equation model or confirmatory factor analysis. What I often see in practice is that People get all excited about their structural equation models that they want to run or their confirmatory factor analysis models that they want to run and they forget to look at their data first in terms of making sure that they understand their data, their variables, that they check their data and so here I want to discuss some steps that everybody should take before they fit a structural equation model or factor model in software for structural equation modeling. And the reason for this is that confirmatory factor analysis models and structural equation models are quite complex models where a lot can go wrong and where you extract information from your data and then later on you cannot see anymore directly the relationship between your data and for example the latent variables that are extracted and so then if something goes wrong with your model then oftentimes we are lost and we can avoid many of the problems that we often see with applications of structural equation models if we first of all have a good understanding of our data and this involves very basic things first of all such as making sure there are no data entry errors in your file and this sounds trivial but honestly this is something that I encounter all the time in my work as a statistical consultant when I work or when I look at other people's analyses and other people's data that there are very very basic problems in data sets that cause a structural equation analysis to fail and so that could be as simple as something that was coded incorrectly that was that there was a data entry error or that a file wasn't uh, imported correctly by statistical software for structural equation models where maybe a specific file type had to be generated or a specific format uh, data in a specific format had to be prepared and then there was an error in the conversion of the data set and then maybe the software doesn't read the data correctly. So the first thing should be to make sure that there aren't any errors. The second thing is that uh, oftentimes we have missing data and so what people often don't do right or where problems occur is in the handling of missing data. So some people will eliminate missing data right away from their data file before importing the data into their structural equation modeling software. And this is something that you really shouldn't do that typically is a bad way to deal with missing data would be listwise deletion where all cases with um, one or more missing scores get dropped from the data set where we use complete case analysis. That is neither a good idea nor is it necessary because most programs for structural equation modeling can handle missing data very well. Most modern software programs now use full information maximum likelihood estimation by default when you run a CFA or SEM and that is the method of choice in many situations when you have continuous outcome variables you have missing data then full information maximum likelihood estimation is much better than listwise deletion. Also programs offer multiple imputation options oftentimes for example in M plus it's very easy to do multiple imputation or full information maximum likelihood estimation so there's really no reason to drop missing values also related to missing values one preliminary step that you should take before importing your data 
or into SEM software or analyzing SEM is to examine the missing data causes or mechanisms. So find out what does what is the pattern of missingness, which variables show dropout and what might be correlates of missingness. So create a missing data indicator for your variables and then correlate that missing data indicator with background variables or other variables to see what predicts dropout or what is correlated with dropout, for example, age, um, socioeconomic status, other background variables may predict why some people stop responding or don't respond to certain items. And then that's important information later on for a structural equation modeling analysis because those variables that are related to missingness can be included as so-called auxiliary variables in an SEM when you use full information maximum likelihood estimation or when you use multiple imputation so that it is more likely that you will meet the underlying assumption of missing at random data. If you're more interested in that missing data question then check out the playlist uh, on this channel regarding how to handle missing data that I offer. I have several videos where I deal more specifically with missing data handling. So that would be an important first step was to check your data, look at missing data. And then also another thing that's related to checking your data is data visualization. That should always be one of the first steps, regardless of what type of analysis you use later on, whether you use conventional regression analysis, analysis of variance, t-tests, correlation analysis, or SEM CFA path analysis. Always we want to understand the distribution of our data and the, we want to look at the data. And the best way to do this is by using graphics, for example, using histograms, plotting the distribution of continuous variables, using bar charts, using pie charts, stuff like that for categorical variables, using scatter plots to depict bivariate relationships. Why is this important? Because we have distributional assumptions in many um, analyses types. For example, when we use maximum likelihood estimation for CFA or SEM, we assume that the data have a multivariate normal distribution and a prerequisite for a multivariate normal distribution is that there is a univariate normal distribution. So we want to look at the univariate distributions of our outcome variables to look at how normal they are. Typically, there's not a strict um, compliance, so to say, or variables are not strictly normally distributed, but we want to see how skewed are they or how much kurtosis is there in the data. So you want to plot your variables and look at the distributions, understand the distributions, also understand bivariate distributions by using, for example, scatter plots to see whether there are, um, for example, also nonlinear effects in the relationships, in the pairwise relationships between variables, because oftentimes in SEM, in many models, we assume linearity by default. And so linearity might also be violated. There may be nonlinear relationships between variables and those wouldn't you wouldn't be able to see that once you fit your SEM and you look at the parameter estimates they are estimated based on the assumption or implication of uh, linearity and then if that's not true then you might get biased results you might get misleading results from your SEM so looking at scatter plots for bivariate relationships is a really key initial step before running an SEM. So that's very, very important. Understand your data graphically, visualize your data, use histograms, use uh, box plots, use um, bivariate distribution plots such as scatter plots. And that's really, really uh, useful in getting to know your data better at a descriptive level before you um, apply complex multivariate statistical procedures that have certain assumptions and that can obscure those basic problems where those basic problems are no longer visible um, where once you fit them. Also important are outliers. So outlier detections, extreme values, those can influence the results of uh, correlation or covariance based modeling such as 
CFA and SEM, which are based on the Pearson product moment correlations and covariances for continuous variables. If you have outliers, extreme values, then those could influence the correlations in a certain way. So you want to check for outliers, make sure those are valid scores, make sure that you address the issue appropriately before you run your SEM to see how much influence those cases might have. So that's very important. And then once you get your data ready for a structural equation modeling program, make sure that your data are correctly imported because also things can go wrong when you prepare your data set for structural equation modeling software. Maybe they uh, the, those programs need your data in a specific format and then when you format your data appropriately then also things could go wrong. So always check that the data import worked properly by comparing descriptive statistics across different programs, comparing the sample size across different programs so that you can be sure that you have the right data set. And then next is thinking about your model. So oftentimes we, we get very excited about our structural equation models and we fit our models right away and then things go wrong. So important is also to think about your model carefully before you fit it. Many um, models are not appropriate already to begin with. So to say when you are new to structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis, oftentimes what people do is they specify models that are too restrictive. And you can see that already without fitting the model, without any fit statistics, you can already tell this model isn't going to work. So think about your model carefully. Does it really make sense to have a factor with 12 indicators, for example, and have uh, 15 factors, each of which have six indicators and fit the whole model at once. That's another common problem is that we fit models that are way too large, way too complex, that have too many factors, too many variables, and we put it all into our first model that um, we fit and then we are surprised that it doesn't work or that it doesn't fit. So start small, start with a smaller model, break it down, maybe one factor at a time or two factors at a time. Think about carefully whether the assumptions that are implied by the model really are reasonable. Is it reasonable to assume that six variables are all unidimensional, measure a common factor, or could this be too restrictive? Also model identification. Think about model identification. I see it very frequently when I consult with people and they have problems that they're actually trying to fit an under-identified model that is structurally or empirically under-identified. And often, again, you can tell by just looking at the model, you can tell, uh-uh, this isn't identified. So if you're unsure, contact a specialist, get in touch with a statistician with expertise in CFA and SEM, and they can guide you. They can make an analysis plan with you to make sure it's not frustrating and to make sure that you do your analyses step by step in a way that makes sense, that you end up with models that are identified, that are not too restrictive, not too complex initially, so that you can actually get results that make sense. So this is very important to also check your model and think about your model carefully before you fit it in structural equation modeling software. And then you can go ahead and you can fit your model. And then if something goes wrong, you already have a better sense for why something might have gone wrong. And you can address issues to begin with. For example, if you found out initially when you uh, analyzed your data or when you screened your data that you have a non-normal distribution, that your variables are skewed or otherwise non-normally distributed, you can apply robust estimation methods to begin with. So for example, you can use a satora bendler correction method or you can use Ball and Stein bootstrapping for obtaining correct fit statistics and correct standard errors in your analysis. And that can also avoid frustration because non-normality can lead to biased fit statistics that may lead to rejection of a model that is actually okay. And so then if you already know going in that you have non-normal data, you can address the issue right away. Also, you can address the issue of missing data right away to begin with. So be proactive and don't jump into your SEM analysis without first looking at your data carefully and making sure you understand the basic features of your data. 
I hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to get started with SEM. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.